Hi. Hey, remember me? Uh, we're actually back. We're back today with the ZL1. Um, last video we covered converting the rear spoiler to the ZL1 1LE carbon fiber spoiler. And in this video, we're gonna go from this to this. Here are all the tools that we're gonna need to complete the ZL1 1LE bumper conversion or front end conversion. Uh, there's gonna be lots and lots of screws and bolts that come off. So you wanna make sure you have uh, a system designed to keep them organized. Uh, maybe like I'll be using plastic bags and things like that to make sure that I keep each set of clips and, and bolts in the proper order. So that's my suggestion for that. However, for uh, the actual removal of the OEM pieces and the reinstall of the OEM pieces, um, you'll need a T15 uh, for the uh, fender liner. Lots of bolts in the fender liner to take that off. It's a T15 socket. Uh, you'll also need a seven millimeter for a lot of the bolts underneath. Uh, 10 millimeter for getting the front bumper off itself. Uh, there is the need for a square bit. So I have this little bit uh, case that has a square bit on it. And that's to remove the uh, absorber for the crash bar that's uh, attached to the front bumper. Uh, lots of pop clips or panel clips. So uh, get a panel clip remover as well couple of different pliers to help remove the clips that are being held on. You do have to remove the daytime running light harness and it'll just flop around if you don't take care of it. So we're going to use some zip ties to make sure that stays in place. And then we do need to cut the factory OEM bumper. So I'm going to do that by drilling a couple holes to start with and then using a razor blade to make sure that the cut is clean. Uh, and of course I'll have a, a bunch of different panel removal tools as well. These will act as shims so that we can uh, get the upper and lower grill off easier. Uh, and then just some additional, you know, deep well 10, shorty seven, uh, battery powered ratchet, battery powered screw gun, just to kind of help get things going faster. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do to get started on this is to lift the car up. Uh, there's no way you're going to be able to get to all of the bolts and the screws in the fender liner and underneath to get the factory splitter off uh, uh, or the fender liners out without lifting the car. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, if you have ramps, you can use them, but that's going to make the fender liner really difficult. I'm going to go ahead and get the car lifted. Uh, jacked up with some uh, high clearance and then uh, we'll start the disassembly and I'll show you step by step what you need to do to get the fender liners out, to get the front bumper removed and then to remove all of the pieces from the factory bumper and replace them with the 1LE OEM pieces as well. All of the OEM pieces and part numbers will be in the description uh, along with links on where you can find everything. GM part numbers, uh, the link to Wild Hammer Motorsports where Matt picked up this 1LE front bumper conversion with all of the OEM parts. I'll have the uh, links for the tools that we're going to use too as well so that you can have everything you need to just by watching this video. So let's get started. So we'll start with the inner fender liners and, and get those out first and I'll get you some close-up shots of that. But to make this a whole lot easier for yourself, once the car is lifted, you can either take the wheels off or all you need to do is rotate the steering wheel in, in the direction or to get the wheel out of the way. So turn it inward and that'll open up a lot of room for you to get to the bolts that you need to for not only the fender liner in here, but also for the bumper bolts as well. All right, so within the fender liner, there are several T15 bolts or screws and they're here here, 
There's also one here. And I know it might be hard to see, but they, uh, they kind of just go through the inside of the fender well, you know, here and here. Essentially, you want to take about half of that off. And then inside the fender liner, you also have that access panel right there, which has a few of the T15 bolts as well. Once you get all those off, there is one pop clip. Let's see if I can get in there and show you. Right down there. There it is. Okay, we are under the car right now. So once you get those fender liner screws out, we've got the panel out over here. You do have to make sure that you get all of the screws. There's some T15s here. There's also some seven mil screws here. Um, so with the ZL1, you're going to have these arrow rakes here that have to come off. Uh, both of these have to come off. And then all of these seven millimeters here all of these. So all of this has to come off before we uh, we can get the fender liner out of the way so that we can get to the bolts that hold on the front bumper. All right, once you get the uh, fender liner pieces off, the, the, air, uh, the arrow veins that are on here as well, uh, the next step is to loosen all of the screws that hold this uh, radiator protector plate. There is a radiator bottom mounted for cooling under here. So we'll get that off and then that'll make it a whole lot easier to pull the fender liner away. Pull that away to get access to all of the bolts that are inside here that hold the bumper on. There are a couple going that way and then there are about three that are you know, bottom mounted. So We'll get those out and then uh, we would have to loosen the bolts under the hood, which I'll show you after we get these done. All right. Uh, the center uh, radiator cover has been removed. So now there are two 10 millimeter bolts here and here. That goes into gets focus there. Yeah, one here, one here, and then there are three seven millimeter bolts here, here, and here, all kind of clustered together. So we're gonna get those loose, and we're gonna go to under the hood. The three seven millimeter bolts that are up, facing upwards. Uh, the one on the outside here, it has a larger washer. So take note of that, because you'll wanna put that back in the right spot. And the two 10 millimeter bolts are the same. Next, you'll want to make sure that you get the four seven millimeter bolts that are connecting the front of the bumper to the fender itself. Now these have a plastic washer that drops in here. So make sure you don't lose those. We're gonna keep those together.
Okay, now that we have the T15s and the panel clips loosened here, we already got those four uh, bolts that were holding the front side of the bumper on. Um, there's some white kind of guide pins, but those will just pop off. We're gonna start off at the sides and just kind of pull it forward. Matt is gonna do that side. We've got it loose and we're just gonna pull straight out. Oh yeah, that is in the way. So uh, I'm glad this happened because if you're running a tow hook, you wanna make sure you get the tow hook out first before you try to slide the bumper off um, because it won't let you, <laughs> it won't fit. So we're gonna get this off and we'll continue. We've got the tow hook off. So now we should be able to just lift and kind of pull forward. That might be hooked on somewhere over there. Let's slowly make sure there's no At this point, I realized that we had forgotten to disconnect the main harness from the body of the vehicle, which is right underneath the driver's side headlight. So on the driver's side, follow the harness that's attached to the front bumper, it goes up, and then underneath the headlight here. So there's the car with the front bumper off. Um, this is the perfect opportunity to take out a vacuum or if you have some compressed air or an air cannon of some sort, you can use this to, to vacuum out those bits that you're never really gonna get your hands into real easy. But that's what the front end of a 2023 ZL1 looks like before we do the ZL1 1LE conversion to it. Now that we have the front bumper off, we are going to focus on removing the upper grill, the uh, crash bar styrofoam shock absorber here, and then of course the lower grill. Uh, if you follow the wire harness, it goes all the way over here to the driver's side, and on the driver's side, you do need to disconnect it uh, from the main harness connection which you can access from the fender liner. So we'll, uh, that, that will help you pull the front bumper off a lot easier. Right now I'm going to focus on getting the crash bar energy absorber out. It's loose, but there are some clips that hold it in. There's the square bit that holds these two uh, screws in, they're plastic screws, so you just need to be careful with them. Uh, they are not pop clips. Uh, they're not Christmas tree style. You do need to get uh, that off. And then behind that, there are some tension, uh, they're not springs, but they're like a tension plastic. You squeeze them and the piece will come off. Then we have some panel clips on the bottom here and a couple at the top. So we'll get those off. All right, now we have those, uh, those clips off and the T2 square plastic screws off. The plastic reinforcement portion of the front bumper has to come off. This does get reused. So we're gonna set that aside. And then to get the styrofoam piece off, I mentioned there's these plastic, they just kind of squeeze. You might be able to do it with your fingers. If you can't, you can use a set of pliers. We'll squeeze them aside. And there is your energy absorption uh, styrofoam piece which now gives us full access to the lower grill and the upper grill, along with the side air intakes. Uh, and eventually we'll flip this to get to the splitter. Now that that's all gone, uh, we are gonna focus on the upper grill first. So there are several metal, they're called almost like teeth tabs or crimp tabs. Um, they're not real easy to get off, but if you have a, a metal panel popper of some sort, you can kind of 
pry at them from the back and from the top and they will just slide off. You will reuse these as well. So set those aside. The tricky part to getting this upper grill off is that there are tension clips that hold that grill in and uh, they're, not, they're not real easy to take off. Um, this might be the, the most difficult part of this install because you have to uh, kind of get these all out at the same time. The clips that hold the upper grill on are a two-piece system. There's a tension tab at the top, at the top of the grill, and there's a tension tab at the bottom on the bottom part of the grill. Within that tension tab, underneath is another clip that hooks on. The easiest way that we've found or that I've found to do this is to go to the tension tab and kind of bend them up a little tiny bit. To relieve some of that tension. So you're gonna go up at the top part of the grill and you're gonna go down at the bottom part of the grill. These are plastic, so don't, don't do push too hard or it will crack and you don't want that. But this will help relieve a lot of the pressure that's holding this upper grill on. And once you've got that set, what you'll be able to do is push down and up on the tension tabs. And it should, still not gonna be easy, but that will help you get the, uh, get the upper grill off of the car. So if the tabs do break, the tab that breaks is part of the, the grill piece. So it's not part of the bumper that holds it together. So you should still be okay. Uh, just don't break all of them. A few more. And there you go. Your OEM piece is out. Uh, the bumper will sag, so I'm gonna get a foam block to kind of keep this up. Uh, it doesn't matter if it sags or not. Um, it makes it easier to work with if it's propped up in its natural form. There you have it. The upper grill is out and we will grab the ZL1 1LE grill so we can kind of show you the difference here. So the ZL1 1LE grill does have a different grill opening pattern. We have a different grill pattern itself. Um, there's a bit more structural rigidity to the upper portion here. That doesn't, this isn't there at all on the regular ZL1. Same with this side. Uh, but again, uh, this is that satin black from GM. Uh, the, the ZL1 from the factory comes with a mosaic black. So that'll help change uh, to a little more of an aggressive look here. To get the uh, ZL1 1LE upper grill back in, it is just as simple as popping it or sliding it back into those clips that we just took the, um, the standard ZL1 upper grill out of. Center first. I'm find those center two slots at the bottom and the Slots at the top. Just kind of get these lined up. Sadly, the battery died here during filming. So 
Uh, the only part that we missed here is that we just finished pushing the upper grill all the way in. Uh, it was a little tough and we just clicked it in uh, and then we moved on to the lower part of the grill. So moving on to the lower grill, there are pop clips located here, here, and one over here at the top. And then again at the bottom, there are those pop clips. Uh, the wire harness is also clipped into the lower grill and you just need a panel popper tool to remove them. Uh, if you don't have a panel tool, you can kind of wiggle these and pull them out. It's not too bad. So we're gonna get these disconnected, uh, pull them off and then slide the new one in. To get these pop clips off, you wanna use a set of pliers to squeeze them in the center and then using a panel tool, uh, pull them down. And here we'll do the same for the top three, just squeeze in the center and pop them up. At the sides, you have uh, some tabs. You just need to use a panel tool to kind of push them in. And you'll do the same on the other side as well. Uh, I'm just removing the wire harness from the bottom of the grill. Just continuing to go around the perimeter of the lower grill, just pushing on the tabs to get it out. And just like that, the grill comes off. Now that we have the OEM grill off, uh, this is the ZL1 1LE grill. And it might be hard to tell on the camera the differences, but this does have a different grill pattern on the standard ZL1. This is the mosaic black. Uh, this is that textured matte plastic. The kit does come with a ZL1 emblem. We just haven't put it on yet, uh, but you can see it's much more aggressive on the sides here. Uh, a lot more aggressive. And the pattern is different to allow better, not necessarily better airflow, but definitely channels the air in a different direction. So you can really see the difference between, you know, the OEM, which doesn't have this aggressive, you know, portion that juts out towards the front, kind of scoops air better, um, standing in the light here. so. You can see it's a uh, pretty substantial difference there. But we are going to get this pressed back in and then going to work on removing the uh, daytime running lamps and the side intakes and putting the 1LE side intakes on. Now that the lower grill is clipped in, uh, we're gonna put these pop clips back in. They do come in both black and white. Uh, there's several at the top. You just push them down up at the top and push them up down at the bottom. And that will keep the grill secure in place indefinitely.
Now that we've got the ZL1 1LE grill popped back in, uh, we're gonna focus on removing the side inlets. To do that, we have to remove the uh, daytime running lamp and the heat sink for it. Uh, there are seven millimeter bolts that are holding that in. Uh, same on this side as well here. And then those same pop style clips will hold the inlet in, we'll remove that. But the lower grill is in, the upper grill is in. We're gonna focus on those two side pieces and then we'll turn this thing around. You can see what it looks like. Now that we've got the daytime running lamps removed, uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna tie up the DRL harness to the other harness that's on the car, um, just to kind of keep it from flapping around and knocking around on stuff. So uh, I'm gonna zip tie those to the side marker light. And remember folks, always trim your zip ties. We'll do the same on the other side. Now to get the side intakes on and off, uh, again, there are the, uh, the pop clips here that you kind of need to squeeze on one side with a set of pliers and pop up. There's two of those. And then again, we have these uh, pressure clips or pressure tabs that are holding those side intakes in. So we're just going to uh, use some pressure to, while we're pulling them forward. Uh, this is very similar to the upper grill. So we can, we can bend some of these tabs up. Just kind of Relieve some of that pressure. There's two top ones. It's gonna be real tight. And then two bottom ones. Now that we got this side out, uh, you just need to repeat the process over here. It takes a lot of patience. It helps to have another person around. Uh, trust me, they can pull on the piece while you're pushing and playing around with the tabs. Uh, before we put the 1LE version back in, uh, there are three locations, three slots on the OEM bumper that have to be cut open uh, for the canards and the splitter to slot into and lock into. So we're gonna do that now so that there's less in the way um, once we get this other side off as well. And I'll get a closer shot for you to see where we're cutting that. So regarding the slots that need to be cut, they are here and GM was kind enough to actually pre-mark these. Let's see if we get those to focus in, there you go. There's one there, there's one right there. And then the third one is down at the bottom here for the splitter. So uh, I'm gonna start with a small hole there and then we'll cut that open with the blade. And uh, just be careful with these, um, you know, start small. It's better to have to uh, open it up a little further rather than having to uh, have a, a big open cut that you can see on the opposite side. So this here is a 764 drill bit. It is just inside those lines that we need to, to work out there. So I'll go ahead and scratch that up a little bit on the back so you might be able to see it a little easier. Uh, but I'm going to start drilling some holes to open that up 
uh, and while applying some pressure on the front side of the bumper. I'm using a slow, high torque uh, drill gun as opposed to, or a, a screw gun as opposed to a high speed drill, just to look for a little bit more uh, control. I've got my holes drilled. I'm going to uh, grab a blade for this next part. You can use a Dremel if you want. I don't recommend it because uh, Dremels can, can jump on you. Uh, last thing you want is to have a huge gash on the outside of this where the uh, canards are gonna end up. All right, we have cut the slits for the canards, and we went ahead and cut the slit for the splitter as well on both sides. We have both side intakes off. Canard slits right there. Splitter slit right there. And the way that this will work is that the Splitter will drop in, or the canard, I'm sorry, or the dive plane will pop in on the side. And then there are uh, those clips that will slide in here to hold them in place. But first, we need the side intake back on. So now that we have the 1LE intake inlets uh, on each side, we just need to pop them back in. Again, just as we remove the old ones kind of out in this fashion, these are going to line up and then push in in that fashion. If at any point you're wondering, did I get this in all the way? You won't have to question it because you will hear a very loud snapping when you do, there you go. There we go. Got that side on. And then what we'll do is put the two clips back in here. We'll move to the next one. Again, we want to line these up equally make sure they're not going to give us any issues and then start pushing them in we are in on both sides completely out of breath because those are ridiculously ridiculously tough to do clips back on and now we're going to flip this thing around we're going to put the canards on we're going to install the one le dive planes um, similar to how the uh, pieces connected the how the inlets connected on the back side these slide in drop in uh, and then those push clips go in to hold them in place so there's two slots here, two here, and then the two that we cut into the bumper. So you can start with the sides to get them lined up. And there is some flex in this piece, so you can flex this up to get it in. Make sure it's up against the body. Now once it's in, you'll use the pop clips to Keep them in permanently. There you have it. It's not going anywhere. Aerodynamically tested and proven by General Motors. No questions on whether an aftermarket piece fits or works or not, these are all OEM pieces, 
OEM quality. Now that we have the dive planes attached, the ZL11LE inlets installed, uh, now it's time to replace the splitter with the 1LE splitters. As we were taking the factory splitter off, the camera died uh, again, getting used to this new battery life here. But uh, there are four pop clips on each side of the factory splitter. And then there's about six metal tension spring clips that hold the middle piece on. You remove the pop clips and then you pull straight out at the center and it'll come right off. The 1LE splitter is designed a little differently. The center portion actually lips over the bumper and snaps into the lower grill. So this kind of slides in from the middle and kind of wraps around the OEM bumper a bit more on the sides as well. So you'll get it kind of lined up and then you'll push forward on it and it'll start to snap into the lower grill openings there's slots specifically on the lower grill for the 1le splitter and as i'm pushing this in here uh, you'll you'll feel it start to kind of slide into those grooves and you'll feel it start to to settle in where it kind of belongs where it fits so as we flip this over uh, you can see here in the center there's a little bit of a gap those are the slots where we need to finish pushing the lower splitter into the lower grill. Uh, this goes over the bumper, so it's an extremely tight fit. We gotta push really hard to get this in here, but eventually you'll see those gaps close and you will feel those clips pop into place that attach the lower grill to the 1LE splitter. Once you have everything in its final position on the back side of the 1LE splitter, there are the same pop clips that came off of the factory ZL1 splitter that fix it to the bumper permanently. Well, semi-permanently anyway. Now that we have the dive planes on, we've got the lower splitter on. Uh, there are end plates that go onto the lower splitter. And there's also a, a slot that we cut the slit for. Uh, there are insert threaded nuts that go in here, um, which again, all of the part numbers are going to be in the description. But the way these work is these just push right in you'll feel a little tiny pop when they're in the right position. And then the end plate itself lines up, slit goes into the side of the bumper, and then there are three screws that go into these threaded nuts that hold the end plate in position. And then the tab will pop down in from the inside and secure that piece. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we're gonna get ready to put the shock absorber and all that stuff back into the center of the bumper. We're going to reinstall the factory shock absorbing styrofoam and then uh, get all of those components back on 
and then reverse the process, get the front bumper back on, and we'll show you the final results. Uh, another thing that I want to do is um, I want to, since there is no DRL for this harness to attach to, I'm going to clip this piece uh, into the one of the holes that the DRL was, uh, you know, was screwed into. Uh, and then I'm going to use a zip tie to kind of hold it in place there. So I'm going to use one of the inlets to put that clip in. And then we're going to zip tie the harness through the screw hole where the daytime running lights were. Trim that. I'm also going to tr trim the GM one because they left that sharp enough to have you bleed out. And I'm going to do the same on the other side here through that hole. Now this actually needs to go up, so I'm going to make sure I leave enough slack on this one. To, to be able to re-plug that back into the harness next to the headlight. And now we're ready to take the bumper and put it back on the car. There we go, I got this side in, you got that side on? Now that we have the front bumper temporarily set back on, we need to go ahead and get the 3,464 bolts screwed back in at the top, underneath, in the fender liners and all of that. And the next time that I come back, uh, this car will be on the ground and we'll see how it looks all set and complete. And there you have it. ZL1 1LE front end conversion done on this 2023 ZL1. Uh, just to recap, it's a different upper grill, a different lower grill. The front splitter is different. The dive planes are added. The side intakes are different. The daytime running lights are gone. We've got uh, end caps on the splitters as well. And a whole lot more airflow, a more aggressive lower grill, and a lot more downforce. All we got to do now is test her out at the track and we'll be doing that October 14th and 15th at Road America. So wish us some good weather and uh, we will see you in the next video.